cover is we're going to go through the whole aspect of using uh, offline simulations for Delta V projects, uh, software acceptance testing and operator training. We're going to look at the individual components, Delta V simulate, and then maybe we're going to talk about how they fit together, what the different options are for there. I'm going to go through some uh, discussions around planning for the uh, goals of the CapEx or OpEx project, how things you should keep in mind depending upon whether you're developing something for testing or for training. Uh, architectures and components of the system. Uh, we'll talk about a really important subject when you're talking about simulation systems, which is protecting the control system integrity. And I'll tell you, we get questions all the time. It's a real hot topic is, do I need high fidelity, low fidelity? What is fidelity? How does it all fit together? We're going to cover that as well and then talk about uh, some stuff you can take practically to get the most return on your investment in your simulation system. So let's uh, first of all talk about the goals. And you know, it doesn't matter whether you're doing an automation project, whether you're doing an uh, a instrumentation upgrade, whether you're planning for any type of project, it's really important to start off with the defining the goals of the system. And um, it seems to be a lot of times the simulation systems, because they're kind of an add-on to a lot of the automation projects, don't have the necessary planning. And it's not that difficult to do to get the planning done so you have your simulation system meeting the needs of the project. When we talk about software acceptance testing, SAT is an acronym that I'm using for software acceptance testing or testing on projects. I always want to think in terms of how many engineers or how many testers are going to be involved with the project? Because that will help me architect and design my simulation system to meet the needs of it. I need to know the span of testing. Um, do I need to be able to test to a process unit, to a process frame, to a, um, a unit operation? Um, you know, how big does my simulation system need to be to encompass all the interactions between the different devices and still effectively meet my testing requirements? And then what level of testing? You know, if most people think in terms of testing control models, but equipment modules, batch, advanced control, and the more you use if you're doing like a, a electronic batch records, um, manufacturing execution systems, even integration with your ERP system, this is a great application for using simulation systems. So think of the level of testing because that's also going to dictate the amount of time you're going to need your simulator, how the simulator is going to need to be set up, and the level of complexity that simulator needs to be implemented to. And then finally, how are you going to handle other systems, I.O. systems, third-party devices like ESDs and PLCs? What is the level of complexity within those devices, whether they're packaged or, um, assist, or systems that are engineered and brought in as part of the project? And do you need to test the logic that resides in those things and the interaction between those devices and the control system or can you treat those systems as a black box? These are all things you really need to think about when you begin your testing. And I'm going to, as we go through our, our discussion here, we're going to talk about how all of these are affected. And then we want to talk about, um, for training, the same sort of questions, but a little bit different. One of the key things I want to talk about with training is how many operators and what is their availability? How many can I train at a time? Uh, what is the the span of training. Do you need to be able to train on a process unit or train and unit operation on the entire plant at one time? Um, this is a really important subject and we find time and time again that people don't plan accordingly. They think of their simulator for an entire process instead of thinking in terms of what are the definable pieces that uh, you can really train one operator around. Are you going to train your operators as an operations team where they're all working in a control room environment or do you need to set them up individually so they work as individual uh, and have are graded and, uh, and evaluated on their individual merits and how they respond to, their, uh, to the training goals? And what are the training tasks or goals? Um, we always think in terms of operator training as operator training scenarios. Scenarios, as we'll talk about later, are malfunctions or different process events you inject and then you measure the results of those operator training scenarios. But it's always good to start off and think in terms of what are the key tasks or scenarios that you want to go through for your uh, training uh, requirements and then what sort of record keeping requirements. 
detail. So if you think of these beforehand, the selection of your architecture and your systems that you need for your operator training systems and your software acceptance testing systems will be much more straightforward. Now let's talk about the components of your simulation system. Uh, Delta V has fantastic abilities to have offline systems with the Delta V Simulate product line. Uh, Delta V Simulate is essentially a uh, Delta V licensing scheme that allows you to build an offline simulation system without incurring the complete uh, license uh, package of a standard Delta V system. There are two different product families within Delta V Simulate. There is Delta V Simulate Standalone, which has no Delta V network, and essentially everything is in one PC. It stands alone. It does have Microsoft networking functionality, which is real important when we design our operator training uh, system, because our simulation, system, our simulator of the process can be in a separate machine. But it's essentially standalone, and there's no ability to have multiple Delta V nodes or controllers like you would in a real Delta V system. Multi-node includes Delta V networking, and you have station function type licensing for that. So if you go to your local business partner or your Emerson representative and you ask for a multi-node, he's going to give you a system that will have a professional plus type of function, a professional and operator station type function. You can also, in addition, use Delta V controllers with the multi-node package as well. Now, there is also a functionality in Delta V Simulate called Delta V Simulate Pro. The Delta V Simulate Pro option allows you to have modules running in the workstation and essentially increase the capacity of the modules running in the workstation so you can use four to six controllers worth of modules. It increases the module execution memory from 16 megabytes to 96 as they run in the workstation. In addition, it has other functionality called uh, like uh, free snap, cut, and restore, and speed up, slow down, which are really nice tools for doing operator training systems. The, that type of functionality uh, allows you to really manage your operator training systems and make your operator training uh, scenarios and everything just much more productive. In addition, on the Delta V Simulate line, there's a uh, utility called Simulate Convert. When you take the module, one thing I, and I apologize, I didn't say about this, Delta V Simulate gives you the ability with multi-node to use real controllers in an offline situation for your simulation system, or also take the modules, unassign them from the controllers, and put them in the workstation, the control modules themselves. When you put them into the workstation, they reside in the assigned modules folder of that workstation, and then they can work and you can essentially set up your training system as a completely software PC type environment. The Delta V Simulate Convert Utility takes configurations that have been designed for foundation field bus, digital bus I.O. or serial I.O. and allows and is a one-way conversion utility that then optimizes it to run in the workstation. And it's a one-way street, so you can't then unoptimize it and put it back in the controller. But it does give you a nice capability for operator training. Finally, when we talk about Delta V Simulate, uh, with the Delta V Simulate version 10.3, there's a functionality called Delta V Simulate SIS. What this is going to allow us to do is it'll take 32 logic solvers, and instead of, again, having the logic solver soft hardware, you can take those and assign those to a simulate workstation and write to the I.O. values of the logic solver and read the, the I.O. values as well. So you can use the simulator in an offline environment. So with that, we have the ability to have this offline virtual uh, control system that looks to the operator just like the real control system in the planet.